Saints of God, I don't think I've ever had a video be so urgent to get to you as this one right here. It is so important that I'm asking you if you have any love of Christ in your heart, if you care for those that are headed to hell and those that are being deceived, I'm asking you to help spread this video any way you can. Get it to as many as you can if you love Christ. While I was doing a short documentary film on, ex on exposing, while I was doing a short documentary film exposing the occult origins of the UFC and the MMA and their pagan roots, the mystery of the Mark of the Beast was revealed to me late last night, early morning, around 4 or 4.30 in the morning. It hit me so hard, I fell to my face and worshiped the Lord. I had the voiceover audio, short documentary, already getting ready to be edited. And it's so important, I had to re-record this for you right now. And what started off as simply just an exposed video, because there's a lot of fake pastors, wolves in sheep's clothing, false Christians online promoting violence, trying to deceive you that it's okay to be a part of UFC, MMA, it's just a sport. And without a shadow of a doubt, we will expose the UFC and the MMA for who they really are. We will expose with the light of Christ the things hidden in the darkness and why they really chose the octagon as their symbol. But what started off as a documentary exposing the violent Christian movement for those that claim to be followers of Christ but support forms of violence turned out to be one of the greatest mysteries exposed in this last hour. And it's on the mark of the beast. The word of God says in Revelation 13, let he who have wisdom count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. I, you, go get your pen and your pad. Get your word. Go pray, please. And come back and, and start this video with me. Pause right here. Go get a pen and a paper, get your Bible, and go on your face and pray to the Lord Yahshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, ask Him to wash you in His holy blood, to bind any powers of darkness that would cause you to be hindered from this message, to help you have the understanding of what His servant is saying to you, and come back to this video, please. So I'm assuming you paused it and you did that. This message is going to change your life. Consider yourself very rich to receive this message. And I thank the Lord. We may not have land yet or a building or a whole bunch of church vans and all of those things. No, we're not, we're not government funded, not 501c3. We're not partnered up with YouTube, monetized. But we are so rich in Christ. We would trade all of that anyways to get the knowledge that God is giving in this ministry on a weekly basis. He has given us revelations of deeper revelations and mysteries about his son, Jesus Christ, and also exposing the things hidden in the darkness. So if you are a part of this ministry, we love you and we thank you for everything you do for Christ in this ministry. But more importantly, thank you for loving Christ. Thank you for taking these messages serious and not taking the Lord or this ministry, his ministry, for granted. Saints, you're going to see why I'm so serious and why this intro is the way it is. And I say, Lord Jesus, please wash me in your blood and speak through me and touch the hearts of the hearers. Destroy the powers of darkness and everyone listening and shine your light in and all around them and cause them to repent and get right with you. Draw them to you, Lord Holy Ghost. Draw them to Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. I'm not going to take a lot of time exposing the UFC and the MMA. 
I'm not going to take a lot of time on this angle, but I will give it to you anyways. And I want to give a special thanks to Brother Joshua for helping with this portion of it. He worked very hard to help with the putting together of the revelation of the octagon mystery. And brother, I love you and I thank you for your labor. And for all y'all brothers and sisters out there that labor in this ministry, that pray for us, that go to war in their prayer closet, that support financially so we can expand in the earthly realm, that pray and fast that we can expand in the spiritual realm, that help spread these messages. May the Lord truly bless and reward you because you love not only with your words, but in your actions and in your deeds. And everybody's on different levels. Okay? We all got to put in work, y'all. There's nobody allowed to be on the sideline right now. We're, out of, we're running out of time. We're literally on borrowed time. And you want to play? Okay, I'm done. Let's get right into it. We're going to deal with this. There's a lot of videos that are going to get played. I might get a copyright hit. I might not. I hope not. But if I do, that's the reason there's commercials. Just pray over your mind and cover yourself under the blood of the Lamb. Skip over them when it says skip and just get back to the message. Don't let that hinder you. But I hope it goes under the radar so there's no interruption with stupid force commercials by YouTube. Okay? Now let's deal with this. First off, every message that we preach has to have the foundation of the word of God. Okay? The mark of the beast is going to be revealed to you right here and right now. But it's going to hit you. So make sure you pay attention and get focused and get ready. This is a life-changing message. One way or the other. Number one. I'm going to prove without a shadow of a doubt. That it is impossible for you as a so-called Christian. To be a part of or support the MMA, the UFC. And any type of violent type of organizations and still claim to be a Christian. Now let's just deal with it. Let's establish it because we got to cut the head off of this serpent. The axe is laid at the root of this false demonic tree and may all the fruit wither up and die in anyone listening's life who promotes this trash. Let's talk about it because there are false pastors. There are literally wolves in sheep's clothing promoting having fight clubs at the church service. There are tons of Christians online who are for this type of violence and say, well, it's the grace of God and God did teach us to war in the Old Testament and this is what they're trying to do. And I'm warning you, if you don't know Christ and you clicked on it because of the UFC or you wanted to know about that, there's going to be something that tries to rise up in you to fight against me and more importantly, the Lord Jesus Christ in me. That's why Jesus said to Saul before he became Paul, he said, why are you persecuting me? Because when Saul was fighting the servants of Christ, wow, he was, he was actually fighting Christ in them. He said, it's hard for you to kick against the thorns. Thorns. So I say to you, it is hard for you to kick against the thorns. I'm asking you to humble yourself and just hear what I got to say about the mark of the beast. Everybody's talking about the chip, biometrics, the TVs, the image, or this, that. The mark is Sunday worship and all of these things, right? They have no clue that it goes way deeper than all, those, all of those things. And I'm not disregarding those things. But we're going to show you the mystery of the root of the mark of the beast right here, right now. So let's just deal with it right now. I got scriptures I want to give you. It's a shame that I have to go through scriptures proving to so-called Christians that they cannot promote nor condone violence in an unclean way. When the word of God says the kingdoms of heaven suffer violence and the violent take it by force. We know very well that Jesus Christ did not do any harm or violence towards anybody when he was in the flesh. Nor did the, the, the men of God. They did not physically strike anybody with their hands. Any type of carnal weapons were not authorized nor used in the Gospels or in the book of Acts. Period. And I want to give this to you as a shepherd. See, Jesus is the great shepherd. I am a shepherd through Christ to help you get to heaven. That's my job. That's Lioness's job. That is this ministry's job is to help you get to heaven, to make sure you don't get led astray by wolves all over the internet, wolves all over your city. They're everywhere. It's overrun with wolves. 
But the great shepherd knows how to fight off a wolf. And he's speaking through me right now to you. I will be your humble servant. You know he's the king of kings and he's the king of the kitchen. He's chefing up this meal, but this meal is a hard one to chew. So make sure you pray it up. Because what they'll say is, oh, what about when Jesus told them to buy a sword? Remember that? But when Peter actually pulled out the sword and cut the ear off of Malchus, the servant of the priest, the high priest, what did Jesus say to Peter? Yeah, get him, Peter. No, Jesus says, Peter, put down the sword. He that lived by the sword shall die by the sword. And we know that God ain't the author of confusion. So if Jesus Christ's motive for them to buy a sword was for them to defend him with the sword, then why would he tell Peter to put down the sword? These foolish preachers. Just like Paul said, the foolish Galatians, they have their own desires and their own pleasures and they twist the scriptures to justify their own means and they want to take you down with them. Well, I'm here to stop that in Jesus Christ's name. Jesus said to Peter, put down the sword because Jesus told him to buy the sword so he could show them what the real sword is. The weapons of our warfare are what? Not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Read that in Corinthians. So if the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, why would Jesus ever want them to fight with a carnal man-made weapon or with fists? It's simple, saints. But you got to read the word for yourself and you got to have a real relationship with Jesus who should be your best friend. You'll know when something's wrong. You'll discern it in the spirit. So now that we dealt with that lie, we just read when Peter told, when Jesus told Peter not to commit violence. And see what people don't understand is in the spirit, what really, the really, the reason why Jesus Christ did all of that was he wanted you to see something in the spirit. What is the true sword that we operate with? The word of God. Hebrew says the word of God is quick and powerful. That word quick means alive. It's living. It's quick and powerful, sharper than any what? Two-edged sword. When you read about the whole armor of God, it, one of the weapons is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Right? So I'm going to show you the mystery, what Jesus was really saying to Peter. Peter used the sword, which represents the word, wrong. He cut the ear off of Malchus. In the presence of Jesus Christ. The revelation is there are many so-called Christians who use the word of God wrong. They use it in the flesh to strike at people. That's why you got so many denominations fighting each other and putting each other down. And religious Pharisees that try to conform you to their will instead of the will of God. Tell you what to do, what not to do, how to dress, how to this. But they're not doing it from this. They're doing it from their own will. They cut the ear off of people that are in the presence of Christ who could get to know Christ like Malchus. And they make it worse for Jesus because now he's got to heal the ear of Malchus. So Peter used the sword wrong in the presence of Christ. Do you use the word of God wrong in the presence of Christ when you talk to other people? Do you use the word just to debate and put people down and prove you're better than them? Where is your heart? So now that we dealt with that, now that we dealt with Ephesians, that we wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world. So if, if we are commanded not to wrestle with flesh and blood, but rather wrestle with principalities and powers, that's our real fight now. See, that's the difference. In the Old Testament, yes, God had David wipe out thousands. Samson wiped out thousands. Moses and Joshua wiped out thousands. But something changed when the mighty son of God came to the earth, manifested in the womb of a virgin. God was prepared for nine months in the womb of a human being. Entered this world through the matrix of the womb. Worshipped by wise men, offered gifts that have symbolic spiritual meanings. And when he came to the earth, 
something called the New Testament arrived. What's a New Testament? If you have an old car and it's getting mileage and the engine ain't running right, you go and buy a new car that's running better. The Old Testament and the New Testament. What is the difference between the two? Clearly they're connected. God has been righteous even when he commanded David to wipe out armies. God was righteous when he commanded Joshua to wipe out the giants in the land. God was righteous in everything he commanded in the Old Testament. Even when he opened up the ground and swallowed people violently, he was righteous in doing it. But God wanted to show us his other side. Do you know there's another side to God? He says that it's God's will that none perish, but yet people are perishing every day. God knows what he's capable of. He could crush the earth with one hand and all of us would be utterly destroyed out of existence. But instead, he said, let me send my son. Let me show them my love. So when Jesus Christ came to the earth, he walked perfect as the Prince of Peace. He may have been bold. He flipped over tables. He did many things, but he was not a violent man. He did not strike anybody even when he was struck. Jesus says that they strike you on one cheek, turn your other cheek. How are you a promoter of UFC and MMA or how do you watch it or how are you involved with it? And you read those scriptures as a so-called Christian. When you guys see and you be patient and you're going to see these mysteries revealed. And there's a reason I have to start with this. 1 Timothy 3.3. 3. Well, let's be quick with it. We got to be quick. So, you know, pause and, and you skim to it because I really honestly can't delay. Okay, I love you. 1 Timothy 3.3. 3. Look at what it says in Jesus' name. Not given to wine, no striker, not greedy or filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. Do you hear this? You can't be a striker and you can't be a brawler. Right? Okay, you might go, well, hold on, bro. That's the office of a bishop. I ain't a bishop. Okay, let's go to Titus. Come on, man. You're not going to win this one, you carnal Christians. You violent, loving, fleshy, satanic Christians. Christian ain't nothing but a title. You got to live the life of a follower of Christ. And I'm dealing with you today. Because you don't realize what's going on on the inside. And the only way to get you to repent and change is to be straight up raw and real with you. The same way Paul was real with Peter when he checked him. The same way Christ would rebuke Peter. Would rebuke people because he loves them. Let's go. Let's go. Titus, come on. Titus chapter 3 verse 2, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. Are you happy now? Oh wait, I get it. I need more. I got to give you like five more scriptures for you to even consider that you've been living unclean as a promoter of violence in any way, shape or form. I'm going to show you the mystery on why Satan has come down with such great wrath. And you're wondering, what kind of wrath? Does it mean he's just coming down angry? Or is he coming down with a principality of satanic wrath to fill the earth with? To make everybody uh, to make everybody wrathful. Wrathful with your mother. Wrathful with your boss. Wrathful with your neighbor. People are being infected with satanic wrath. Anger. Violence. So we just read right here, we're supposed to be gentle with all men, and we ain't supposed to be brawlers. Right there, if you support UFC, MMA, if you get into fights and all of that, you're supposed to end it right here and now. Period. Luke 3.14, you read that on your own time. What did the man of God say? What did the Almighty say to those soldiers? Luke 3.14, let's go there real quick. Real quick. In Jesus' name. And the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, What shall we do? And he said unto them, Do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your wages. This is interesting. 
Now, what I'll do on another video in a later time is show you the difference with wisdom. When it comes to you, you are to lay down your life. The word of God says there is no greater love than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends, for his wife, for his children. You are not supposed to fight for your life. It don't mean you can't flee to the mountains. Now, I'm going to show you the transition in another video, but for now, we got to deal with this right here. People that love violence because they always want to go to the Old Testament. And you see, they'll always try to justify it in the Old Testament, these wolves in sheep's clothing. They'll say, well, go to Psalms 144. Okay, let's go there. Let's go there, Mr. Scholar. Let's go there then. Psalms 144. Look at what it says in Jesus' name. Blessed be the Lord, my strength, which teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. I got a song on an album, Liquid Fire, called Man of War. But what type of man of war are we supposed to be? One in the natural realm or one in the spiritual realm? Is our fight with flesh and blood or the demons and the wicked ones using the flesh and blood against us? Huh? So this is one of the scriptures they'll try to use to make you think it's okay to be a part of violent things. Whether sport or some drunks outside of a bar fighting. Whether you involved in fighting or you secretly watch videos online of people getting punched in the face and you love it. You feed off it. We're going to show you how dangerous you're walking. You don't even realize it. I'm going to show you the mystery that Christ has revealed to me. Late last night I was here. I had to get on my face trembling before the most high God when he revealed this mystery to me. I'm going to show you the mystery on how Satan is going to get so many to receive the mark of the beast. You're about to see it tonight, right now in this video. And make sure you don't take the Lord or this ministry or the word that is given through this ministry for granted. If I'm humble enough to be your servant and invite you to this dinner table, which is governed by Christ, at least show respect and gratitude and fear and trembling when you're reading the word with me. The word of God says, I tremble at his word, huh? And what a lot of these false prophets and these liars will do is they'll go to other scriptures. See, this is what they do. This is what makes it so devious is they use the word of God unclean. This is what Jesus was really saying to Peter. He was using the sword wrong in the presence of Christ. These people claim to have ministries and YouTube godly channels. And they claim to be using the word of God in the presence of Christ. But they're using the word to cut your ear off so you can't hear from God. Just like Peter cut the ear off of Malchus. They'll go to scriptures like Psalms 144, right? Look at what it says. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord, my strength, which teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight, right? They'll show you that scripture and be like, this justifies all the violent things they want to feed off of, right? Getting into Taekwondo, Karate. I mean, come on, saints. How long are we going to give these people a pass? Knowing that you cannot get all these belts and get up to a black belt without it being endowed with that new age spirit. So they'll use that scripture, right? And we know David went to war. We know Samson went to war. But when Jesus Christ came to the earth, he fulfilled the law and he taught us a greater way. Instead of walking in the flesh and warring in the natural realm, like all the great men did in the past, like David, Samson, Moses, Joshua, he showed us to walk in the spirit and not fight with flesh and blood, but fight against the principalities and powers. Yes or no? But if this is so, there must be a scripture in the Old Testament because God is not the author of confusion. So let's go to Psalms 11. Psalms 11, let's see what it says now. Verse 5. The Lord tries the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence, his soul hates. So those who love violence, it don't matter if you love watching it as a sport, or if you love watching world star hip hop videos, or you love listening to murder music, if you love violence, if you love playing Call of Duty and you all day long watch people get shot in the head and in the body, you're being programmed to love violence. God hates you. Yeah, that's what the word of God says. And you love watching people getting shot and killed. God hates it. It's in the word. How are you going to refute it? 
All those that hate me love death, says the Lord. Romans 8. This is another classic one. All these lukewarm, non-Christian, claiming to be Christians speak, right? Go to Romans 8 and let's see what it says. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. You notice most Christians that live carnal will only quote the top half. They were like, there's no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah, Jean did I. Right? They start speaking in tongues. Well, hold on a minute. Finish the verse. There is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So there's a give and take. If you do not walk in the flesh, if you walk in the spirit, there is now no condemnation to you if you follow that blueprint. So by default, if that's the case, if you're walking in the flesh and you're living carnal and you're feeding off of violence, there's condemnation to you, period, by default. You don't got to go to a four-year Bible seminary cemetery to figure that one out. But this next one is huge. Go to Galatians 5. Like I said, I'm going quick. If you got to pause it, it's cool. Galatians 5, look at what it says. Look at what it says. But let's see what it says in verse 13. Watch this. But brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only not use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. That means you can't use your freedom in Christ to go live worldly carnal, feed off of violence. There's a danger that comes with that. And you will be held accountable. But we are commanded to love and serve one another. Watch 14, for, for all the laws fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if you bite, listen to this, and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. So what is this biting and devouring and being consumed one of another? It sounds familiar, and we're going to get into that in a minute. So if we keep reading... But, but let's keep reading though. This I say then, walk in the spirit. What? And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lust against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. In the original Greek, that means they're completely opposed of each other. They're completely enemies. The spirit fights the flesh and the flesh fights the spirit. You see? So you can't be in the middle. You can't be a halfway Christian in this. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things you would, you see? But if you be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now watch this. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife. Seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revilings, and such like of the which I told you before and have told you in time past, they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Period. And you think this is it? There's way more fruit of the flesh. Demonic fruit. He's just giving you a, a brief outline, but there's way more because it confirms it with other scriptures. Now watch this though. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. For if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Now pause right there. I want you to imagine a so-called Christian who's a UFC or an MMA fighter, right? Before he heads on off to the ring, because we're going to deal with this step by step so we can get it out of the way. And I'm going to give you the greater mystery through Christ that's literally going to change your life. Right now, we're just dealing with this whole UFC, MMA, and that whole industry. If you are a so-called believer of Christ, without a shadow of a doubt, after this brief outline, it's going to be impossible for you to fake it. 
You're going to have to just say, well, I like the violence. I don't care about Jesus. This is what it is. Or you're going to get convicted, renounce it and repent and change the way you live and desire and feed off of things. There's no more gray areas, y'all. This whole type of gray area living is done. Because true saints of God who are called by God and not by man. Paul was an apostle, not of man, not neither by men, but by Jesus Christ. So the true leaders of Christ are coming out of wilderness. You ain't never met them before. They didn't look familiar. They ain't been in your seminaries. They ain't got a suit on. They're not signed up with the government. They came out of the wilderness eating locusts and wild honey, telling you to repent. But let's see this, though. I want you to imagine a so-called Christian who's about to watch a fist fight, UFC, MMA fight, or an actual fighter who claims to be a Christian on the way into the ring, and I stop him, and I say, hey, excuse me, bro. I just wanted to say this to you before you go in there and punch that man's nose halfway off the side of his face. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, and gentleness, and goodness, and faith, and meekness, and temperance. How could that man hear what I just read to him and continue to walk into the stage to act and do the exact opposite of what I just read him? And how they justify this. Well, there's a difference. They're doing it out of sport. They could break each other's arms and hug afterwards and sing hallelujah. You see how foolish it is. One of the most wicked things happening on the earth right now is the merging of the world with the bride of Christ. Saints, you better stay far from it. Everything from music with Kanye West and all of this. Kanye, no one's kicking him out. We're just telling him to get in the back and get right with God. Because then I told you so, didn't I? He just got done at another Sunday service where he says Mormons and Catholics are with us and we need to stop pushing them away. This man has no knowledge of Christ. He's just zealed up right now or he's an agent. It's one or the other. But merging the world with the bride of Christ can never happen. But they'll tell you, oh, it's just sport. But we just read in Titus 3, 2, we're not to be brawlers at all. Regardless if it's sport or behind a bar somewhere, half drunk off Henny. Period. Right? So how could... You promote or be a part of violence. And it ain't just MMA, UFC. We're just exposing this right now, this industry for who they really are. And then we're going to deal with the next thing. So I gave you a whole lot of scriptures about how we don't fight against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. That means flesh. That means fists. That means guns and knives. Right, Peter? Huh? but are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, right? We read that there's a difference on what's in your heart, right? What type of violence? Because the Bible says the kingdom of heaven suffer violence and the violence take it by force, but what type of violence? We don't fight with flesh and blood. We have something far greater. Paul was operating in supernatural power to stop the enemy. So we're going to get into the video segment of this. We're going to expose these things about the UFC and the MMA. It's absolutely undeniable. Are you ready for it? Watch this video. Well, talk about kind of your feelings coming in this fight. Like, I've read some interviews and heard some things. I feel like you're kind of coming in with a little chip on your shoulder, so to speak. A little, a little anger, some emotion. Is, is, is that the, the case? Um, I mean, you always have to have a little bit of that. I think that if, if a fighter tells you they're not doing that, it's a lie. You have to have that, like, yes, skill, and yes, keep your head, but there has to be some down and dirty in you still, you know? Um, but I actually think I'm coming in with less emotion than I normally am. Um, I think I have... <laughs> This is funny. I think I've tapped into like the dark side of me a little bit more in training camp. You notice what she said? She said anyone that tells you they don't tap into real anger in a darkness, they're lying to you. That's what she just said. But have you ever heard of pancreation? I bet you never heard of that. Or most of you haven't. This is the true origin of the UFC and the MMA. 
I'm going to show you some pictures on the screen. You see these? These are ancient paintings of the ancient Greece, the ancient Greeks and the Romans. Do you notice something? I want you to notice this article. Literally read this article as I'm talking to you. What do you notice about it? Pancration is the root and the beginning of UFC and MMA and all in the industry that is like it. They mixed fighting and wrestling together and they fought violently. Some even died. But notice that they say their gods started pancreation. You see it right there? And when it was outlawed at a certain period, it w and notice that if you continue reading, pancreation was considered a pagan festivity. It was considered a pagan act. So my question to any of you, you so-called Christians who promote this violence and say, man, this is sport. You can't do that because they would love each other after they punch each other around. They can love each other. But according to this, Actual, factual, historical evidence, pancreation, is the root of UFC and MMA. Remember what the book of Ecclesiastes says? It says there's nothing new under the sun. What was shall be. Right? So, this is the, this is the modern day pancreation, which means all power. That's what that word means. But I want you to see it deeper though. Look at the side-by-side -side images of Pancration paintings, ancient paintings and pictures, and look at the UFC and the MMA pictures. Spit an image. We are commanded by the Most High God not to involve ourselves in any form of paganism, yes or no. This provokes God to anger. We only serve the Most High God. We are to avoid all paganism and anything that is offered up to devils, the Bible says. You cannot sit at the Lord's table in the table of devils. Doesn't it say that? So how could you as a so-called Christian support or be a part of something that has roots in paganism and false god worship? More should I say demon worship. Because every false god has a principality that is worshipped in place of it. The demons gather the people to worship the principality in the image of that false god. Whether it's Zeus, whether it's Hermes, whether it's, it, it don't matter. So right there is proof. And see, the fighters would fight in the names of different gods. That's why if you notice in the pictures, there would be trainers and there would be priests. There would be religious men there at the fights. Do you see the birds over the fighters? Now, someone who's not in the spirit will just see that and they, oh, okay, those are just birds, right, flying by. Or could it be that they represent religious spirits of false gods? It's a mockery because the Holy Spirit descend, ah, the Holy Spirit descended upon Christ like a dove, you see? These ancient Greeks and Romans would relate these false gods as hovering over the fighters, this had a deep occult religious aspect to it. Well, you say, well, the UFC and MMA don't have any religion to it. Are you sure? Are you sure you positive? We're going to get into that in a minute. We're exposing this. Without a shadow of a doubt, it's going to be un... You are not going to be able to play the fence anymore. You're either going to be labeled a pagan and a, a liar who's pretending to be Christians. Listen, you could be a, in a garage. It don't make you a car. You see what I'm saying? You can say you're Christian. I can say I'm a vegan. I say I'm a vegetarian and wild out on a T-bone steak right, right now with some mashed potatoes, gravy, some, some mushroom gravy. Am I a vegetarian? Am I a vegan? Am I a vegetarian? Or am I just saying I am? Have you ever seen the videos of real men that were in the military that'll approach some scam artist at the mall wearing a uniform that he got off his dead uncle? Out of his closet and he's going around trying to wow women and get money off people. What do they do? They check him because they know there's something wrong. He's not official. He's not authentic. Huh? Are you an authentic follower of Christ or not? Because there are true saints of the most high God who will not give you the pass. We're going to stop you right where you at and say show us your cred cred uh, credentials. 
I don't want to see your little 501c3 paperwork. I don't want to see your little seminary graduation. I don't want to see your tie and suit. I want to see your spiritual credentials. Does God sign off on you? Because if you condone and you promote this, you are a pagan. Pretending to be a follower of Christ. And the word of God says there would be many that come in my name. Jesus says I will tell them I never knew you. He said there will be wolves in what sheep's clothing. So you're spoken of in the word. But for y'all brothers and sisters that are with us on this. And you know it's the truth. You make sure you stay in prayer for those that are deceived. That they, the yoke will be broken off of them. I have fire on me right now. Because they are trying to take you from your walk with Christ. And I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you the mystery in a minute through the light of Christ who reveals it and shows it to his servants. I humbly say that. So you just seen right there, Pancration was started in paganism, in the occult. It's nothing but the modern day UFC and MMA. You want to go one step deeper with it? Doesn't it say in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 that we are the temple of God and if you destroy the temple, God will destroy you? Let me ask you a question. You see some of these images on the, on the screen right now? They're very hard to watch. I must warn you. Some of the things you will see might not be good, easy for you to watch. Pray over yourself, but you're going to have to deal with it. Men's legs snap in the midst of fighting. Noses get pushed to the side of their cheek in the middle of a fight. Some have even died. Blood shed all over the ring. And yet we are the temple of the Most High God. That is the equivalent of the Old Testament where the Holy of Holies was in the temple of God. And they allowed drunkards in there brawling and throwing each other, smashing into the table of shoe bread and all of that. If that was the Old Testament temple, an outward thing, and if we are the temple of the Holy Ghost, how should we treat the temple of God? Show me in the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the book of Acts where you see Christ or the men of God and women of God operating in the flesh with violence, striking at each other when they're struck at, even for sport or whatever. And if you've been falling into it, it shows you that you're not close to Christ like you think you are. You do not know his character, his mind, and I'm going to show you what's really going on with you so you can be saved. Am I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? That's what Paul said. I'm saying it to some of y'all. You're getting angry with me right now, but it's really the demon in you that's trying to rise up against me. Not all of you. There's some of you in the spirit right now. You're shouting hallelujah and you're in prayer for me. But you better strike at that spirit trying to rise up in you to war against us. And hear what we got to say because we're throwing you a life rap before you drown and go to hell. Drowned in the worldly ways of the enemy. So without a shadow of a doubt, it's pagan. The next mystery we're going to show you is why the UFC and the MMA chose the octagon. I want to show you a picture. Now I'm not going to play the video because I'm trying not to get a copyright hit so there's no commercials. Because as you know, we are not monetized, but we don't get paid by YouTube. The only time there's commercials is if we use videos, they hold us for copyright, okay? But in this video, it's actually from the MMA, UFC, or whatever, and they're doing a video showing why they created the octagon for their ring. But look at the picture in the video. You see that? Look at how satanic that is. See, on the outside, it looks like, oh, they're just joking around, but they're letting you know it's satanism involved. It's paganism involved. But I want you to watch these clips on the occult origin of the octagon. I want you to watch these clips on the significance of the octagon in the occult world. We'll be right back. You know, this symbol, the octagon symbol is a really, really powerful, powerful symbol because it's a, an energy portal that you can use to gain access into a new experience so in this video i just want to mention that symbols are information language that is received instantly you either resonate with that information that comes forth from a symbol or not and sometimes the energy comes inside you and within your field and you see 
instant results and other times it takes a while but either way by the power of the shape of the symbol itself there's an energy projection into your force field of light so it's always wonderful to work with symbols that's the reason why we create grades same thing you release yourself from it and allow the beneficial energies by the power of your intention to allow things to start moving around to shift energies around so i really love symbols because they really are shortcuts sometimes you don't have to say so much because the symbol itself the energy of the symbol your intention will always create what you need so they're very very wonderful tools that assist us in this process of life the power of their voices the essence that was coming from within them and there was an octagon sign with a cross in the middle just the way i have drawn this one so this is really personal for me because the it's a symbol that i saw in my dream an octagon with a cross in the middle and the people were toning and the sounds were coming out and as they made these tones with their voices there was no additional instrument as they made the tones i can't remember what specific tone it was i'm assuming it was the om when they made that sound this cross in the middle opened up inward and the next thing i knew that the people who were toning were inside a new experience life had shifted something had shifted so at that point i understood two things number one that the octagon is truly an energy portal that truly has beneficial energies and and it can open up portals it can shift the direction it can move energy it can open up our hearts it, it can take us somewhere where we need to go it is therefore highly unlikely that there isn't a intimate connection between the eight-sided great pyramid of giza and the eight-sided floor plan of the Dome of the Rock. Remembering, of course, that the Dome of the Rock is believed to be the original location of King Solomon's Temple. Researchers Graham Hancock and Robert Bubal in their book Talisman relate that the Knights Templar, who during the Crusades made their home inside the Dome of the Rock, adapted the octagonal shape into their famous Red Cross symbol. Down through the ages, the importance of the octagon encoded in the Great Pyramid of Giza has been saved and preserved in the fraternal organizations, the secret societies, and the mystery schools. And interestingly enough, eight links to the Large Hadron Collider. Yes, this monstrosity built in Geneva, Switzerland. That's about all freaky science, of course, but the problem is it could create a wormhole, a black hole. It could destroy the world. I'm actually more afraid of these people doing these experiments than any war.
Everything has a cost. Everything has two sides to it. And so definitely does MMA. Hi, my name is Rogas Leo, and today we're going to look at the brief history of MMA and one of its dark sides. Mixed martial arts is not a new thing. It actually dates back all the way to 648 BC when Greek Pancratio, a martial art combining boxing and wrestling techniques, was introduced to Olympic Games. In early 1980s, Horion Gracie, the son of Helio Gracie, one of the founders of BJJ, moved to the States where he continued the tradition together with his brothers and held up the Gracie Challenge where they took on all comers. Horion even offered $100,000 to anyone who could defeat him or his brothers in a Valetudo style match. In this way, the Gracies were becoming notorious in the American martial arts community, yet Horion still had a desire to bring the Valetudo matches to the main public to further promote the Gracie Jiu Jitsu. This eventually led to the creation of the Ultimate Fighting Championship, or UFC, a no holds barred event which was streamed in pay per view television. The event was won by Horace Gracie, a member of the Gracie family, who mainly used his family's jiu jitsu. This led various fighters to include BJJ and also other styles of martial arts into their own training regime to get a better edge against others and in this way creating a modern take on mixed martial arts or MMA. Although the event was planned to be a one-off, it received such huge success that a chain of further UFC events followed, creating a strong tradition of MMA fights in the whole world. Yet as every event, it had its dark sides too. UFC in its early days had a reputation of being extremely violent to such an extent that it even drew the attention of the US authorities, leading to 36 states enacting laws that banned no holds barred fighting. Following the criticism, UFC increased cooperation with the state athletic commissions and redesigned its rules to remove the less palatable elements of fights while retaining the core elements of striking and grappling. Following some other changes, in 2001, UFC gained its way back to the pay-per-view television and became the fastest growing sport in America. Yet despite the changing of its rules, it still had a hidden shadow that is actually a huge danger to every MMA fighter up to this day. In the beginning of UFC's history, fights didn't involve as many punches. This actually wasn't so much a result of strategy as it was a result of lack of gloves. Although many could think that a punch to the head without gloves lead to more impact, in reality bare knuckles of the hand are quite fragile and early MMA fighters often even broke their hands punching their opponents in the tough bones of the head. Back in the beginning of UFC, most winning strategies almost always involved grappling. Because of the lack of gloves, going for knockout punches was a dangerous strategy, making grappling the safer, more effective choice. Yet that was not as enjoyable for the crowd to watch, of which, most part, wasn't aware of the grappling subtleties happening on the ground. In wanting to increase the mass appeal of the sport, UFC added gloves, which led to heavy punches to the head becoming a more common strategy to win a fight with a knockout. Many other rules and scoring changes to favor strikers were added too to make the sport more thrilling to watch. While surely this strategy was very successful in a commerce sense, it also added a huge hidden cost to the fighters themselves. With receiving constant punches in the head, increasingly more studies started showing a huge and common danger of brain injury in MMA. The American Journal of Sports Medicine in 2014 found that a regular MMA fighter suffered a traumatic brain injury in almost a third of professional bouts, later stating that rates of KOs and TKOs in MMA are higher than previously reported rates in other combative and contact sports. While there are many dangers to brain damage itself, not everyone know that can be not only serious, but also permanent and largely irreversible. Various symptoms of brain damage include mood swings, loss of consciousness, amnesia, irritability, slowed reaction times, and sleep disturbances, leading to significant changes to a fighter's life. A famous MMA fighter, Gary Big Daddy Goodridge, who is only in his 40s, has to take multiple medications suited for Alzheimer's patients and suffers constant memory loss, which is often noticed by his close friends. It is also believed that brain damage can lead to depression, which more and more fighters are being diagnosed with. This does not only lead to a great decrease in the quality of fighters' personal life, but also leads to a growing danger of possible suicide. While the fatal effects of depression are still a theoretical danger, the brain injury itself can sometimes even lead to direct, deadly results. Just recently, in April 9, 2016, Joel Carvalho suffered so many punches to the head during a single fight that 20 minutes after the technical knockout, he fell ill and 48 hours later died in a hospital of brain injury. The sustained damage was based strongly on the open rules of the fight, which allow a sequence known as round and pound, 
where an opponent takes the other to the ground, obtaining a dominant grappling position, and then striking the opponent in a long sequence of punches only until the referee interferes. This fatal event opened up intense discussion about the danger of MMA, especially in relationships to brain damage, with some people even suggesting to bring back bare knuckle fights to decrease the sustained damage. Yet so far, the future direction of the sport is still unclear. Do we spend enough time thinking about what cost they have to pay to offer that side to us? Are we really ready to sacrifice the quality of life and even the lives themselves of these great fighters for our own entertainment? Last question. Um, of course, you weren't in Florida. A bit of a controversial moment, Yo Romero, and I know this is a very positive thing. I'm not trying to rain on that parade. Quite frankly, I don't feel like it was as controversial as some may, may think, but I just wanted to get your take on what happened. No, it wasn't controversial at all, but the reality is this. You just won the biggest fight of your career, you know? Um, America doesn't want to hear your thoughts on Jesus. And, you know, keep that stuff at home. Religion, politics, all that stuff. When you're out there fighting and you're being interviewed, they want to hear about the fight. It's awesome that you love Jesus. Love Jesus all you want. Just don't have to do it publicly. But if you would just keep that stuff, you know, talk about your fight. You know, people don't want to be preached to. So a gentleman had emailed me asking me, is it okay for a Christian to pursue an MMA career? Again, we're going to go back to glorifying God, right? So there are many, many MMA fighters out there and boxers that accredit their victory to God. They say after the victory, you know, this victory goes out to God or all glory to him. He's the one that got me through this victory. He's the one that got me in this position. A lot of fighters are famous for that, like Manny Pacquiao. Um, Yoel Romero from UFC and many many more and they accredit their victory to God. The question is, is it okay to beat people up for money to glorify God? I think the answer is obvious. You know it is Jesus that said, you have heard thou shalt not kill. But if you hate someone in your heart, you've already killed. And we know that violence is a byproduct of hate. Well you have just used the byproduct of hate, which is violence, to make yourself some money. Now, does that really glorify God? Does that bring glory to God? All this talk about fighters being competitors and things like that, where does the spirit of competition come from? Now, before we answer that question, let's go to Ezekiel 28. God was talking through Ezekiel to the king of Tyrus. He said, you were the anointed cherub. You were in the garden of Eden. You were perfect when you were created. So was God really talking to the king of Tyrus? Well, kind of. He was talking through the king of Tyrus to the one who was really in charge behind the scenes. And that is the devil. Because he was the anointed cherub. He was the covering cherub. He was in the garden of Eden. So where does the spirit of competition come from? Isaiah 14, starting from verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Lucifer, son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mounts of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. This whole idea of I'm going to be better than you. I can do this better than you. That whole competitive idea, that whole com competitive spirit did not come from God. It originated from the devil himself. So should we have that same spirit? Should we have that same mentality just like the devil? No. And this is the reason why I don't believe in pursuing that, that Christians should pursue an MMA career. Cage fighting. Cage fighting. Wow. I absolutely love it. What a disaster yeah. in the making. <laughs> I mean, I love it. Many it I mean, I, you know, I like adrenaline rushes. It gives me an adrenaline rush. Yes. Watch. Can Christians separate martial arts and yoga from its original source? No, it cannot be separated. Even those that are in the martial arts, that are masters, will tell you without the spiritual aspects of it, that you cannot separate and receive the power that it takes to operate in any martial arts. The whole training, the whole premise of the training, and so how someone could say that they would train in order to uh, just defend themselves, defense eventually goes into offense. You can't have one without the other. You can't mm -hmm. constantly defend without eventually having to try and take out your partner. No. And in this particular case, what you're seeing is blood and gore. What is happening is we are being desensitized to the fact that 
that blood and gore is okay and we're graduating and at, at one point we're going to come to a place where we're going to want more. Eventually weapons will come into play. Uh, eventually we're going to see fights to the death if it ever becomes legal in this country. Yeah. At and churches. Yeah. Churches are loaded. Yeah. Churches are loaded today. It's crept in. I wouldn't have believed it 20 years ago. A Christian instructor joined to a pagan style is spiritual adultery, unfaithfulness, and apostasy. I'm 100% Jesus. God can see my heart. People misunderstood, think, oh, how a Christian can fight in the name. Spinning power! Oh, and now Brito goes for the triangle choke! Yeah, for sure, a Christian can fight in MMA, a Christian can go to a war, a Christian can go... We are Christians, we're not different, we're just Christians. And I don't see nothing wrong with that. But do these thoughts agree with the Word of the Living God? And if this is correct, then why does the Lord tell us through His Apostle John that He which saith He abideth in Christ ought Himself also so to walk and live, even as Jesus lived? They call themselves warriors, literally fighting the good fight of faith. Never mind that the Gospel of Matthew quotes Jesus as saying, if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also, because tonight you're going to meet a group of Christians who say that by striking an opponent, well, they're striking a blow for the Lord. Ryan Owens has an encore presentation from our series, Faith Matters. Fight breaks out. But this isn't your grandfather's bar fight. Hurt like hell, but yeah. <laughs> and then as soon as I take you, let's pray. Yeah. And some of these fighters give Bible beaters. Father, we just uh, thank you for the opportunity to go out tonight and to train and compete. And A whole new meaning. The line of distinction between professed Christians and the ungodly is now hardly distinguishable. As Christians, there are times where you take shots. That's where the Bible gives you your training. I get all the time, I don't look like the typical pastor, and that's okay. Um, there's actually a cool verse in the Bible that says, be weary when all men speak well of you. <laughs> if everybody loves you, you're doing something wrong. But God, you have called us to a fight. When Preston came up with the idea of having a fight club in the church, it was an easy thing to say yes to. <laughs> Tough guys need Jesus too. You guys like to see me fight another pastor? We'll just be a couple of God-fearing men punching each other in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Pastor versus Pastor. Tonight, we got to fight. And then we'll talk about Jesus tomorrow when we go to church. How many are yet walking in darkness, not realizing the high calling upon their lives in Christ Jesus? And this ain't love. At the end of the day, it's about reaching people with the gospel, regardless of what you need to do to introduce them into a relationship with Jesus Christ. Punch, punch, punch to the face. Now go for the jump right there. For he has promised us that an elder must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, not self-willed, not soon to anger, but a lover of good men, just, holy, and temperate in all things. An elder must not be given to wine, not a striker, but patient, and not a brawler, holding fast the faithful word, so that he may be able by sound doctrine and instruction. What about self-defense? And what about the physical training methods of these arts? Can I not be a Christian and yet still train in these arts without their spiritual influences? It is through actions repeated that habits are formed, habits which form our character. And it is by character that our destiny for time and eternity is decided. If we are practicing daily to block and counter, what will become our natural response when meeting confrontation or opposition? And what is the character which these arts impart to their students? When pure knuckles meet pure flesh, that's pure karate, no matter who executes it or whatever style is involved. If we fight for money, I'll stop hitting you when you ask me to. If we fight for honor, I'll stop hitting you when I feel like it. I carry my faith inside the cage with me. I probably wouldn't be in the position I am today if I wasn't a Christian. This is a battlefield. 
We need to charge them, not wait for them to come to us. Mainstream Christianity has feminized men. If we would raise our boys to be men, these kind of problems go away. As I progress in my Christian life, I start to see a conflict there. Cage fighting does not speak about loving one another. Cage fighting is about hating one another, basically. God said, don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged, because I'm your God and I'll be with you wherever you go, right? Lucas, get your hands up! Listen, finishing strong doesn't mean we win every battle. Jesus never quit. Jesus never tapped out. He finished what he came to do. If you really want the enemy off your trail, you got to learn to put your foot on his neck. Somebody shout Jesus. Personally, I would prefer to have a full MMA competition here at the church, uh, but that is not legal in the state of New York still. Uh, but for now, it's Muay Thai. The whole reason we're having the fights here is so that we can bring people in and tell them about God. And the hope is that through the fight, I can create a relationship with the person I'm fighting and extend Christ to him. If I win the fight, it's because God gave me that fight. It's not anything I've done. It's already been decided who won. It's just you wait to find out what happens. Hold on, Squeak. Hold on, baby. Never seen that before. Dear God, thank you for the win. Thank you that uh, he's, he's okay and he's walking. Lord, I pray there's no damage. Nothing swells up bad later. And uh, God, I just thank you for uh, just for the, the safety out there. In Jesus' name, amen. amen is that my Christian faith didn't align with what I was doing in the ring. My desire when I went into the ring was not to hug and, and embrace that, uh, that opponent that I was up against. My, my desire kicked in as the old man, and my desire was to either maim or kill him with control. What most people don't understand, especially when they see the cage fighting, the pride fighting, and all of these things, is that what they're seeing is glorified street fighters that have had some training in the martial arts. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so in that fighting, you see, there. I've seen them go in there with crosses uh, tattooed all over their backs, and I've seen them with all of these Christian symbols and go in there and try to dismantle that person any way that they can. Now, is that God's love? Is that Christian, um, uh, a Christian walking the, the life of love? Or is that someone who is trying to do great bodily harm to that other person? What if you put the Christian name on it? Doesn't it make it Christian? Well, if we put the Christian name on prostitution, does it make it Christian? <laughs> Very good. The Lord is my rock and my salvation. The Lord is my God who trains my hands for battle and my fingers for war. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy, for when I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. I pray that over all the fighters because so many of them come from a background of Christianity but have now been cast out because of their choice of career or their choice of desire to fight. And then when I pray something over them that's, that's in the Bible, they get excited. It's like, because the spark of the Lord is in there, but they feel so dirty and so far away from God because their parents or their church told them, oh, if you're going to be a fighter. You when I start to tell them that the Lord Jesus, not only is there a Bible verse for you for strength, and, I, and I, I'll pray a verse over them. There's another verse that says, the Lord is a man of war. Yahweh is his name. Let these fighters know, you can do everything. God's got to go in there with you. I think people have a huge misconception about fighting and then religion. Everybody thinks that like religion is like peace and harmony, but like I think fighting is a good thing. I think violence solves a lot of things, you know. Jesus told to the disciples, and he told he told the disciples, carry a soul with you. So when you guys go up there and preach the word, you guys make sure you have the soul with you. So you can fight those guys. You can fight the guys that's gonna rob you. You guys can fight the guys that, you know, we try to hurt you. Yeah, it's a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, Bye -bye. Bye -bye.
He opens his bar because he doesn't. The people that 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 wonder the correlation between Christianity and MMA either don't know anything about MMA or don't know anything about Christianity. Real Christianity is sacrificial. It is a daily warfare of trying not to screw up. MMA is a daily warfare. Nobody said you ain't gonna get scars. Let me tell you something, the Lord Jesus got some of the worst scars you've ever seen. He's got holes in his hands, holes in his feet, and a big old cut on his side. Not to mention he was whipped 39 times with a cat at nine tails that had pieces of bone and metal in it. He's carrying some scars. The real Christianity, you're gonna get scars. Real MMA, you're gonna get scars. If you don't feel called by God to reach out to MMA fighters, that's no problem. I'll reach them. Learn from, uh, from the scriptures that um, God doesn't like pride. Sometimes God humble you to just make you um, understand that the ego and the pride goes to, uh, to another level. I'm trying to move forward with um, me being a better person and more humble. Christianity for me is life. Not everybody is called to do everybody else's work. The Bible says he gave some to be teachers, some pastors. Everybody has a different calling. The only thing you can, you can get from Ryan is uh, positive stuff. I love Ryan, he's, just, he's, 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 a, he's a godly man. You're never gonna be free from your flesh. That desire is never gonna end. It's what you do with that desire. It's how much you let it affect you. He's made a prophecy concerning some of you. You've heard his voice tell you. Now fight. Don't let yourself be disqualified. Fight! It's my first MMA debut. I'm nervous, excited, and I can't wait to get it going and just show everyone what I got. This fight, we just want to get my hands going. That's the plan. But if I see something, take it. Be an animal, be physical, and destroy. Animal, physical, destroy. But when God wants you, he'll get your attention one way or the other. That's the, that's the way I look at it. And he wanted me, and he got my attention. When the money, and the fame, and the fortune, <laughs> and the power are there, I hope he could hold up in it. This is a very, very tough industry. And I'm, I just pray and pray that, that that his strength holds up. I help them with the spiritual aspect of it. I accept that as part of the challenge. Helping these kids get ready. Punch him in his face as he stands up. Now hit him, now hit him. Now make him pay. Get up and turn into him. Gird up and turn into him underhook, yes. Pound it, hit him with the knees. Use your left knee, keep going. 15 seconds, just keep hitting him with your knee. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might and you will succeed for Christ. And you're going in that cage, and that other fighter may be alone, but you're not alone. God's with you. Let the Lord do something great with your life in this business. So all of this training, you won't even use ever again? No, I won't use it again. I've had circumstances... I can understand exactly where you're coming from. I, I've had circumstances where men were violently trying to attack me with words, and they could not get within a three-foot radius of me because I was protected. The story of Nikki Cruz and David Wilkerson is a prime example mm -hmm. that Nikki Cruz had a reputation of never missing, but he couldn't change the situation that was happening there. He couldn't get to David. And in that process, in that process, he was able to do nothing, and yet that day two lives were changed, both David's and Nikki Cruz. For all eternity. Mm -hmm. For all eternity, and today they're changing the lives yeah. of millions of people around the world. I, uh, I, I landed some good stuff in there, but I don't know, something, something is just, it's hard to sometimes pull the trigger now, I guess. I don't have that, uh, that killer inside. I don't know, it's, it's really hard to explain, but I, I, uh, I hesitate a little bit now. I, uh, I don't know what to say. It wasn't, it wasn't my, best, my best performance. Are you feeling that as you get older and you have more things happening in your life, that you're changing as a fighter? Yeah, as a man. I feel like God has really called me the last uh, little while. And I don't know, it's, he's changed my spirit, changed my heart. And it, it, it takes a certain spirit to come in here and and put a, man, uh, put a man through pain and stuff. And I just don't, I don't know if I have that, that, same, that same drive to hurt people anymore. I don't know what it is, but it, uh, it's confusing. But, you know, I know the Lord has something in store for me, but uh, he was speaking to me in here tonight. And I don't know, it's, it's a different feeling.
Well, how do you feel? You know your next matchup is soon. You're going to come back right away against Neiman Gracie. How are you feeling as far as getting back in this cage basically in a month and a half? I have to uh, get out of here and reevaluate. Um, you know, we'll see what happens. Tonight was, uh, was, there was a mix of emotions in there. Uh, I landed some good stuff, but uh, there was something, something different. All right, well, congratulations. Look at how many ways the octagon is used in the occult. Even the Freemasons. Every stop sign you drive up, there's a reason it's an octagon. But I want to give a special shout out to Brother Josh in the ministry. Because God showed him this revelation of the octagon. See, that's the beautiful thing about this ministry. It's the anointing overflows to others. If you take Christ serious, if you're actually in the fight with us, and you honor Christ and honor his servants, and you get in this fight, the anointing falls on you one way or the other. There's many blessings and many anointings. Paul talks about several gifts. You will be blessed, I'm telling you. And there's many that can testify since they have gotten to the, since they have committed themselves to Christ in this ministry, their lives are changing. They're seeing deeper in the spirit. That's because there's an impartation. When you sit at this dinner table and you honor Christ and honor his servant, God blesses you for it. So shout out to brother Josh for this next revelation that he, God revealed to him. Because God revealed to him the octagon and how it was an occult meaning. But it actually goes one step deeper. The reason why the ring is an octagon is because when they're fighting, they're shedding blood as a what? A sacrifice. You see it now. So not only is it pancreation, and it starts with the origin of the occult and paganism, but they chose the octagon because it's a, it's a very important symbol to the occult. And what happens is they harness the power of the shedding of the blood of man. Because remember, we know all about blood sacrifice in the word of God. And we know that Satan tries to copy and mimic blood sacrifice. So when they're fighting in the octagon and noses are being broke, skin is being split open, limbs are being broken, they are being a sacrifice to the demon gods, the false gods. They're shedding blood on the altar of the... They're shedding blood on the altar of the octagon. And it entraps the power and opens up gateways. And all those rooting them on are being infected with something that we're going to talk about in a minute. But they're all antichrists at the top. You understand? You remember this clip with Dana White? Watch this. Controversial moment, Yo Romero. And I know this is a very positive thing. I'm not trying to rain on that parade. Quite frankly, I don't feel like it was as controversial as some may, may think. But I just wanted to get your take on what happened. No, it wasn't controversial at all. But the reality is this. You just won the biggest fight of your career. You know, um, America doesn't want to hear your thoughts on Jesus. And, you know, keep that stuff at home. Now, there's two things I want to say about this. One is you can see that Antichrist spirit rise up in Dana White. And I don't care if he claims to be a Christian. You are not, Dana. You need to repent. You are a pagan disguising yourself as a Christian, period. If he claims to be a Christian. Maybe he doesn't. But the oxymoron is he was talking about the fighter who just got done punching the face in of another man and try to say the Lord Jesus got him through it. Jesus ain't had nothing to do with your wicked pagan ways, sir. But I'm coming against you, Dana White, for trying to mock Christ and talk about ain't nobody want to hear about no Jesus. Or this prideful, Luciferian, Conor McGregor. Yeah, I said it. This man talking about, I'll fight Christ and win. Christ is still dead. God's coming for you, Mr. Conor McGregor. You think your little fighting Irish is going to save you from the wrath of God? You better repent, you prideful man. Because the God of the universe... Who walked this flesh by the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, is still alive. He rose from the dead on the third day, Mr. McGregor. I think you read the wrong scriptures. 
I think you, I think you read the wrong book. Maybe you read a Quran by accident. Maybe you got punched too many times in your head and lost too many rounds and didn't understand you weren't reading the Bible. You were reading the Quran instead. And this is that antichrist spirit all through that pagan industry of violence. Is that my Christian faith didn't align with what I was doing in the ring. My desire when I went into the ring was not to hug and, and embrace that, uh, that opponent that I was up against. My, my desire kicked in as the old man and my desire was to either maim or kill him with control. Like what most people don't understand, especially when they see the cage fighting, the pride fighting and all of these things, is that what they're seeing is glorified street fighters that have had some training in the martial arts. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And so in that fighting, you see there, I've seen them go in there with crosses uh, tattooed all over their backs, and I've seen them with all of these Christian symbols and go in there and try to dismantle that person any way that they can. Now, is that God's love? Is that Christian, um, uh, a Christian walking the, the life of love? Or is that someone who is trying to do great bodily harm to that other person? What if you put the Christian name on it? Doesn't it make it Christian? Well, if we put the Christian name on prostitution, does it make it Christian? <laughs> Very good. So there's a lot of men that are waking up. That man is no joke. He was deep into the karate, martial arts, taekwondo, ascended into high places. He became a follower of Christ. He is telling you point blank range. It is impossible to get involved with any of those without becoming a pagan. That's like me joining the gang of Bloods, Crips, MS-13, but saying I'm a follower of Jesus. I shoot people, I rob people, I do drive-bys, but I'm Christian. See how stupid that is? So yes, MMA and UFC, you are exposed. And any of y'all listening right now, if you're not a follower of Christ, you're already lost. I pray you get saved. I pray you repent. I pray you get to know Christ, the Prince of Peace. But in reality, my fight is not with Dana. My fight is not with y'all that promote all of that. You're just pawns at the bottom. My fight is with the principalities. But I'm warning y'all, you will go to hell if you don't repent and change. Period. But if you're not a follower of Christ, there's no point for you to even come at me in the comment section. You're going to defend it? Then go watch it. Ain't nobody stopping you. God gave us free will. If you want to go to hell, you can go to hell. If you want to repent, get saved and make it to heaven, you can do that through Christ. The word of God says, I lay before you life and death. Choose wisely. You see? God says in the book of Revelation, he's seen them wanting to be in the bed with Jezebel. He said, fine, go on the bed with Jezebel. God will give people up, I'm telling you. But I think we've had enough of exposing the MMA and the UFC. We started with the foundation of the scriptures. Then we went ahead and showed you where it's really pancreation. That's the root of it. And it starts off pagan. They say that the Greek and Roman gods themselves created pancreation. But you're going to be a Christian UFC and an MMA fighter fighting in the name of Jesus. No, you're fighting in the name of Zeus. That, that's, that's your little trickery. But you notice in the satanic octagon ring designed to harness the power of demons through the bloodshed of human beings as an offering on the altar. Notice that most of the octagon rings has the monster energy drink logo. And most of you know by now that the monster drink in Hebrew is 666. Vav, vav, vav. Right? Yes? But we know that, but I want to deal with this. What is their slogan? Unleashing the beast. Huh? So we got to go into it now, saints. This is what you've been waiting for. This is way more important than just exposing the MMA and the UFC. Now, without a shadow of a doubt, if any of you out there know anyone who claims to be a Christian or a pastor or any of the above, and they claim to be, but they promote or support any of this, just mark them as a pagan. If after you warn them, they still do it, just mark them as a pagan. Now, I do want to give the opportunity. We will be doing a very serious prayer at the end of this video. I want all of y'all to pray with me. 
And if you've been involved in this, you'll be able to renounce that paganism and get washed under the blood of the lamb. The true sacrifice. Now, saints of God, we're going to stop the first part of this message here. I want you to do this prayer with me. Now, the reason why I stopped the video here is because the next half of this message is far more important than exposing the UFC and the MMA. Because the next video that's following after this one, part two, is called Feeding the Beast. Through Christ, we will show you the mystery of the mark of the beast. Many have sought after the truth on what it is. What does the image of the beast mean? Some think it's the TV. Some think it's AI computers. Some think this. They want to know what the mark is. Is it an RFID chip? This next video that will be uploaded after this one will literally change your life. It has changed mine. So I've decided to stop this video here and do a prayer with you against the UFC and MMA and renouncing any violence in you. The reason I did this is because many people have a microwaved mind. They can't sit through a three-hour video. So I've decided it would be wiser to stop here, do a prayer with you about the MMA and the UFC and pray on this topic, to pray about this topic, so that way the next video following after this, which is called Feeding the Beast or The Mystery of the Mark of the Beast has been revealed, thank you Jesus Christ, you'll be able to watch it as a separate message without losing the blessing because you stopped this video halfway through. I believe I was led by God to make a wise decision. So pray with me. If you're someone that has loved the UFC or been involved in the fighting or violence, I want you to say, Lord Jesus Christ, forgive me for condoning in this paganistic, for condoning and participating in this paganism, for enjoying to see violence Lord, please remove that out of my soul. I renounce the MMA, I renounce the UFC, and I renounce any organization on this earth that promotes violence. Lord Jesus, change me on the inside. I don't want to do violence to people, and I don't want to enjoy seeing people hurt. I don't want to love to see blood shed and broken bones and split skin. I want to be a man or a woman of peace. I want to love you, Lord Jesus. I want to walk in the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Forgive me, Lord. Take the appetite of wanting to see violence out of me. Lord Jesus Christ, I renounce the occult. I renounce the occult. I renounce the occult in the MMA and the UFC. I renounce the witchcraft divination through the octagon, through the bloodshed to open up doorways. Lord, change me and make me a child of God who pursues peace and love and meekness and temperance and faith and patience. I want to walk in the spirit, Lord Jesus Christ. I repent, Lord for loving violence. I repent, Lord, for trying to justify it, falsely using scriptures to, to justify my own carnality. Lord, I repent, Jesus. Renew the spirit of my mind and make me hate the things you hate and love the things you love. And I want to pray for all the fighters involved in the UFC and the MMA and that as many as possible will be saved. I want to pray for Dana White and Conor McGregor and all the rest that they will be blinded on the road to a Damascus like you did to Saul, that Lord Jesus, you will save as many of them as possible, Lord Jesus. Because if you can save Saul, you can save them. If you can save me, you can save them. And I want to pray for those that say they're Christian, but get involved in this wickedness, Lord, that you show them the truth and convict their heart and cause them to walk away and put it down and get a greater reward in you, Lord Jesus. Cause them to hate violence and cause them to be violent against the devil. That is our violence now. We are violent in prayer against Satan and his kingdom. 
for the weapons of our warfare, Lord, are not carnal but mighty through you. So give us spiritual weapons against Satan and his kingdom so we can set the captives free through you, Jesus Christ, just like Moses did through your power. I pray that many who get entertained by these violent things, that that, ha that appetite will be removed from them and they will start to be drawn to love and peace and righteousness in Christ Jesus above all. Lord, break the spell and the satanic curses that is being permeated to the people watching this madness. Break it, Lord Jesus Christ. Break the power of that demonic, occult, pagan, pancreation. Break it, Lord Jesus Christ. And strengthen the bride of Christ to be warriors in you, Lord Jesus Christ. To be men of war in the spirit and not men of war after flesh. In Jesus Christ's name. I'm a man of war, I will not fear the dark, I will stand and fight, because my God is light. I'm a man of war, look into my eyes, can't you see Jesus Christ, who died but now's alive? I'm a man of war. Tired of hearing Christians say they'll ride for the Lord. The question is, do you really show him? Everybody say that Jesus is a God of love and peace, but he's also a God of war. Do you really know? Ah, I'll tell you about the story of David when he was near the war, heard Goliath mocking the king. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine defying God? Where is Saul? Let me talk to the king. Saul said, David, everybody's afraid to fight the giant. He said, man, give me a rock and a sling. See, my power ain't in my arms or in my mind. It comes from God. I give me the green light, watch what I bring When I used to watch sheep taking care of the land The Lord delivered the lion and bear in my hand That's when Saul looked at David in amazement Baffled, there wasn't nothing that was scaring this man I will not fear the dark I will stand and fight Because my God is light Start praying till I start to feel heaven and down me with the power of Christ. Put on the whole armor of God and hit the block. Fight every devil that tried to devour my life. Bring the war out of me. First thing I did was grab that whole Jezebel and throw her off the balcony. Then I went to the shore of the ocean to grab her side on. And I dragged him out to sea. Gasp for breath, watch him kiver and die. On my way to fight the demons and the giver of lies. Here comes Moloch with his cremation to care. I ripped his head off and threw it straight in the air. This is for all them children that you murdered when you bound them up and lit your altar on fire, placing them there. Here comes Dagon, I've had it. I called on the fire of God and turned that pump I'm demon into no fried habit. With sight. It don't matter who the devil tries to bring in the night Like King David, blessed be the God who taught my hands to war And bless my fingers to fight And we don't fight against flesh and blood But principalities and powers and the rulers Cause my craters Stand up and rise and fight for the Lord In the power of the cross or Savior it don't matter how many Nephilim are roaming the land Brother better know you a man And have no fear Like Samson fighting a hundred Philistines With the jawbone in his hand Saying worried things ain't going according to plan We about to bring a storm in the land And I ain't cowering down I'd rather rise for the Lord and die in battle with a sword in my hand